All right, um, what's up everybody? So this video is gonna be a um, review of sorts of uh, topics from Physics 1, specifically like the topics that are gonna be most important to carry forward into Physics 2. Um, so this is like, you know, an optional video, but it is one that I um, have gotten a lot of requests for in the past. So um, I figured I would go ahead and put it up in case there's anyone who wants to watch this in advance of the semester to kind of get their bearings heading into physics too. Um, on that note, the uh, one little announcement I have is that I did receive word this week that I will be a, a TA for physics two in the spring. Um, I don't know which sections yet, but um, at the very least, uh, this YouTube channel will remain active in some way through that semester. Um, hopefully we can do something similar to the, the homework reviews that we did last semester. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we may need to, depending on the sort of structure of the course and the professor's expectations, may need to sort of adjust how, um, how I'm approaching those going into the spring. But um, at the very least, I will be there. And we probably won't know which sections until like the week of class, because that's just how the physics department runs. Um, but at the very least, um, if you're taking it in the spring, I'll be here. And if you're taking it later, um, you know, the entire the entire point of this channel is that I've been doing this for 10 years. And this is my like last go around. Um, and these videos will hopefully remain up, you know, in perpetuity. So um, these will be here whenever you decide to take physics too. Uh, but for today, I just kind of want to run through like especially the the important topics uh from physics one that you want to make sure you have a solid foundation in that like we're not really going to review as they come up in physics two but you may be expected to use them okay so first of all what is physics two about uh, in physics one we laid the foundations of mechanics um, you know motion f equals ma energy and then talked about a few different topics toward the end so those topics at the end that we covered were like gravity and fluids and civil harmonic motion. Those are actual physics topics that build on top of your basic fundamentals of motion. Physics two is just another one of those topics. So just like gravity or fluids or civil harmonic motion, which is actually a type of motion, but you could, you know, spring motion or something like that. So in addition to those topics, there's another topic called um, electricity. And eventually it becomes electricity and magnetism. But the way I'm gonna structure this review is just sort of looking towards the first month or so of physics two and what you're gonna need for the first month or so. So the first month of physics two is just electricity. And when we are first studying electricity, we're primarily studying um, the electric force. Oop. The electric force and uh, its derivatives. So since the electric force is a force, that means one topic that you're obviously going to want to know is F equals MA. Newton's second law. And remember, we summed our forces when we had different force vectors because this is a vector relationship. And so that's one thing that you want to be able to do is doing the summing of the forces and everything that comes with that, which includes breaking forces into their components, adding them together in component wise in the X, Y, and Z dimensions. And then if you need to, finding a magnitude of the Pythagorean theorem and finding a direction. Um, and uh, on the other side of it, whenever a, an object does experience a force, there's an acceleration that is created. And so when you have an acceleration, then you can do motion problems. And this is gonna be one of the topics that we're not really going to review in physics too, but you can take a charged particle and place it, uh, subject it to an electric force, let's say, and that charged particle is going to experience an acceleration. And when it experiences an acceleration, a problem can ask you rather than what is the acceleration of that force, the problem may ask you what is the final velocity after it moves some distance. So that's still going to be a motion problem. You're still going to be doing kinematics there. Typically, you'll have a constant acceleration, but you'll do some kinematics um, once you find the acceleration. All right. Um, other topics that are going to be at hand. I think the best way to illustrate this is to sort of jump into my overall sort of thesis in this review, which is, this is gonna build off of um, one of the chapters that we did 
last semester. So in Physics 1, they're at Chapter 13, which was Homework 11. I'll put the video to Homework 11 in the description. Chapter 13 was on uh, gravity. <clears throat> and I, I think I sort of mentioned this, but of course it's toward the end of the semester, and I think that might have been an exam week as well. But uh, sort of toward the end of the semester, but chapter 13, when we, when we talked about gravity in the universe, um, you know, like gravity in space, um, that is the chapter which most closely resembles the stuff that we're going to be doing for the first month in physics two. So if, if you're really like, if you're executive functioning over break or you're like uh, really bored uh, and you want to review any chapters from, from last semester, I think that that, you know, may, might be the one to to spend a little bit of time on. And um, so just to kind of look at the, the topics that we covered in chapter 13, when we're talking about gravity. So the important ones were, first of all, that we had a gravitational force, which was G big M little M over R squared. In physics two, we're gonna start right off by defining something called the electric force. I'm not gonna talk about it just yet, but the electric force is gonna look very similar to this equation here. And um, we're gonna define an electric force. It's not gonna be due to mass, it'll be due to charge, but um, the rest of this is basically gonna look identical. All right, in that chapter, we also spent quite a bit of time calculating the acceleration due to gravity. And the acceleration due to gravity out in the universe, it's supposed to be a little g, is big G, big M over R squared. Now we called this just acceleration due to gravity, and I may have actually said this word at some point, but there's another word for this um, uh, concept, I guess you could call it, and that is that this is what is called a field. So a field is gonna be an important thing in physics too that we're gonna come back to, but it's just things that are derived from the respective force, and they're all derived the same way, which is to divide out the thing that is experiencing the force, the little m, in the case of gravity, but it'll be different things for different forces and fields. But if you divide out the thing that's experiencing the force, then you create a field. Remember, the whole point of acceleration due to gravity is that we don't need to necessarily know what the mass is of some astronaut floating in space around a planet. We can just say that anything will be generally subjected to this acceleration due to gravity. And that's what a field is going to represent when we move into physics too. We can say, all right, we don't need to put a particle in the electric field to understand the physics that are going on there. We can just generally express the physics due to that electricity with a field. The other um, the other topic that we covered a lot of in chapter 13 was uh, potential energy or energy kind of in general, but specifically we had the potential energy due to gravity and it was negative G big M little m over R. And to go even further back, you remember when we, we defined potential energy in terms of work and there was a definition for the energy where we um, integrated the force with respect to the distance and that's the same way that you would derive an energy here is by integrating the force with respect to distance well in physics two we're again we're going to define that electric force and then we're going to integrate it with respect to distance and we're going to come up with a potential energy so go ahead and write that Just to, to recall, I, th there were only really a few problems, but we are gonna do like an entire chapter on, on electric potential energy. And the big thing was when we had those different arrangements, remember how we had like an arrangement of particles and I made a big stink about how each pair of particles gives you a potential energy. So for instance, here where I have four individual particles, how many pairs do I have? I have one pair, two pairs, three pairs, four pairs, five pairs, six pairs. So I have six potential energy terms. I have six negative GMM over Rs, and I need to calculate each of them and then add them together. We're gonna to be doing a ton of that with uh, electricity and with the electric potential energy that we're going to derive. And it's gonna look just like GMM over R. I can go ahead and tell you, instead of G, we're gonna have K, and then the, the Ms are gonna become charges, but it'll be KQQ over R. 
and we're going to say how many how many pairs do we have we have a potential energy for each and then if you wanted to change the potential energy and figure out the work that's done we know that you know work is equal to the uh, opposite of the change in the potential energy when a particle is moved about that was something that we had to do um cool so all right so that kind of covers uh, very roughly what was covered now, there are some topics that we went into like uh for instance when we went inside of a uh you go inside of a, of a planet and you have to find the uh, acceleration due to gravity inside the planet which we now could just call the field you have to find the, the field inside the planet um sorry about the dog uh the one other topic that we didn't cover yes yeah, so there I, i've set this up in a grid and there's one that is empty right now uh which we did not have anything for in gravity um and we are going to have uh, an expression for this in electricity and uh this is going to be sort of the i think this, is, this will end up being the it's the third or fourth chapter so it'll be like week three or week four that we're going to cover this topic but this topic is uh this is going to be called something called the potential and this one we spend quite a bit of time on the potential is going to be related to something called the voltage which is the difference in the potential but initially we're just going to define the potential itself and the reason why this fits in on the grid is because we can we can derive the potential one of two ways we could either um just as we've done on this side we can uh integrate the field with respect to distance or just as we did up here we can just divide by the thing that is experiencing the potential energy and derive the potential so to give you an idea that potential if we were to have one in gravity we didn't but if we were to have one like we'll see in physics uh two then that potential would look something like this it would be we use v for potential in physics too so i'll just go ahead and use that here i'll say v sub g call it the gravitational potential the gravitational potential in this case would be uh something like negative g m over r so notice i've divided the little m off of the potential energy um, and that's given me the potential so this is a way of just as the field is a way of conceiving of the force without having to have a little particle there the potential is a way of conceiving of the potential energy without needing a particle at a certain location so if we go back to our arrangement on the left side here where we have these four different particles the potential would be to say if we were to remove say this particle i could ask you to still find the potential at that location and that potential would then be some representation of the of the energy that, that, that a particle placed at that location would gain by being placed at that location. That's very roughly. We're gonna do a ton with potential. It's gonna kind of actually be the more key and more fundamental topic that's gonna to come out of, the, out of uh, this discussion. But like I said, we're gonna sort of start with force as our entry into it because we know F equals MA. And then we're gonna define a field. And then we're gonna look at the potential energy. And then finally, we will define the potential. And we're going to do a whole bunch with the potential and then relating it to the potential difference and eventually we're going to turn that into a battery and then you can plug the battery into a circuit and you can have light bulbs and do all sorts of cool stuff with it and that's sort of the direction that this this course is going to go so um yeah so i think that that uh sort of the, the topical review i think if you, could, if you could do forces if you could do potential energy and you can do motion um then you're going to be in, in decent shape at least for that first um homework or two the problems are going to take a little bit of a step up in difficulty the reason for that though is because rather than rushing through all of this at once like when we did chapter 13 we only did one homework instead now we're going to have two or three or four homeworks covering these topics so each one of these topics is going to get their own homework and we're going to do a bunch of different problems where we're going to sort of dissect it and go a little bit more in depth so there are some people who um although uh, so is physics too more difficult that's the question that i'm about to answer so there's there's two sort of perspectives it, it totally depends on the student um on the one hand probably the more dominant one is that physics 2 is a little more difficult the reason why physics 2 is more difficult for some people is because it is much more conceptual in physics 1 when you're dealing with 
you know, applying a force to an object and accelerating it. You can, you can picture yourself pushing a box across a room, or you can picture yourself throwing a ball off of a, a roof and how the, the, you know, trajectory that the ball is going to take through the air. It's much more difficult to have a physical grounding in something like an electric force in an electric field. So that tends to be more difficult for people. On the other hand, the reason why some students do say that physics two is a little bit easier is because it is a little slower and more deliberate and more in depth in its uh, studies of each of these topics. So some people do um, have a little bit of a more straightforward time. Some people have more difficulty kind of accessing the, the uh, ability in your brain to create these models because that's really what you need to be doing is you need to be able to sort of you know create visualizations in your brain for how these forces and fields are working and how particles are accelerating and things like that. Um, but yeah, so that that is sort of the long and the short of it. The the, the structure of physics two is going to be uh, the first exam is going to be electricity, roughly. It, it, of course, the exams kind of move around a little bit and it can line up weirdly, but generally, <clears throat> historically, how it's gone is the first exam is electricity. The second exam then is magnetism, and magnetism is even funkier than electricity. Magnetism, you have a right hand rule. You have we go right back to this grid, and you start off with a magnetic force and a magnetic field. And um, but those are those don't look like GMM over R squared and GM over R squared because the magnetic force uh, is applied perpendicularly, and so you end up with a there's a cross product, and that gets kind of hairy. So exam two is always um, a weird one in physics too. And then, uh, of course, we, we then tie electricity and magnetism together. When you tie them together, you form electromagnetism, which is the study of light. And so the last exams material um, covers light, and um, which is, you know, I mean, that, that's cool, right? Uh, it's, it can be painful, but at the end, when you get to take a step back, you get to be like, hey, nice, I just did an entire exam on light. That's, that feels good. That's some like high level stuff um yeah all right so yeah that'll be it um i guess for this little review if you'd like to uh take a look at chapter 13 i'll put a link and um uh, if you you know as i said if you don't end up being in my discussion section it won't be the end of the world i'll still have to have office hours regardless and um i will continue to update this channel so all right have a good break everyone and um i will see you in the new year